I would like to have five minutes of your time to let you know why we are here today, why we are discussing what we are discussing, and what is IVF worldwide. And I'm a medical uh, director of the Productive Medicine Fertility Unit in Kaplan Hospital. I'm also the co-editor of the textbook in the field. Um, we initiated a new concept of congresses 12 years ago to deal with controversies basically in gynecology and fertility and perinatology, and it was a little bit successful, and it went into the various fields of medicine. So we created a company called Comtech Med, which helped us to organize uh, this meeting today. And uh, also, uh, I founded with Milton an uh, IVF worldwide website. How the idea to find such a website came alive? In 2008, we organized a congress called COGI in Paris, and it was 30 years following the birth of the first IVF baby, and we decided to honor uh, Robert Septov and Edward for the first people who initiated this process. And we, the theme of the meeting was IVF. And I thought, well, how do I market now the Congress among the IVF units? So I went to Google to find registry for IVF units, and I couldn't find them. And I know that in Israel, for example, there are 24 IVF units, and if you put IVF in Israel, you hardly get two. I can find them all on the internet, but I need to do a very deep search into Google. So I thought, well, probably there is a need for such a registry a worldwide of IVF units. So I decided <coughs> with Milton to build a website which will enable IVF units worldwide to register themselves into this website. And as I ask Itai and Eyal, how do you approach the people to build your website? What do they think, what do you think they need to know? And I thought that building a website is a very simple thing. You know, Google advertise going to this page, click this, this and this, and you'll get a website. So I thought, okay, it will be a very simple website, which we'll be able to build by ourselves. And I said, well, how do I know the way to build a website which will attract people? So I said, well, I don't know, but I'll go to the major website worldwide, and I copy them. And I went to Google, and I copied the background and the Google map. I went to Apple, and I copied the colors. I went to Wikipedia, and I copied the fonts. And I said, well, they did the search. I'll use this search. And this is the way we initially built the website. <clears throat> At the beginning, we, have, uh, we put first 500 units on the website. And within the last two years, another 2,800 IVF units worldwide joined voluntarily this website. So we have approximately today on the website 3,300 units of IVF. There is some limitation of language barrier, so we are missing most of the IVF website in China and in Japan. But we think that we can gather that around the world there are approximately 4,000 IVF websites. And this is the way <coughs> how it looks like if you click on the map. You can see these are uh, IVF units around the New York City. If you zoom on the unit, you can get the information that the unit actually put into the website. So they put the initial, um, initial information about the website, what they are doing, a link to the website, and a contact information if you want to ask the unit questions. Since we wanted this website to have something more than just information about other websites, we built and created an education center, which has several sections in this education center that you can see here. But mostly, you can see um, part of the, almost all the textbook in the infertility related to ART, in which you can click on one of them and you can get information look like this, which is animation, video, photo, and text. This is part of one of the chapters. Also, we found a link 
to 12 textbooks in the field. So you don't have to buy the textbook today, you can go into this link, download, upload, read, do whatever you do with this textbook. So this is mainly for students, uh, young doctors, researchers. We decided to use the website and the people behind the IVF units as a community. And we decided to build the history of IVF. So we built a skeleton, we sent out an email shot, we have data of approximately 60,000 gynecologists in the field. So we send them an email and ask them to provide us information how IVF was actually, the history of IVF, how this was built. And we have, I think, the most largest and profound section about the history of IVF with the reference and all the photos of those who initiated this process from the beginning. In addition, uh, we are dealing with science as a physician. And the science that we are dealing with is what we read in the journals published as a peer review papers. And three years ago, I was asked to give a talk in the World Congress of IVF in Geneva. And the topic was the luteal phase. How do you support the luteal phase? And how do you support the patients if they're becoming pregnant following IVF treatment? So I went to the literature, I make a research, and I summarize my talk by presenting a paper which was published by the group of Abu Gahar from Egypt, in which he sent a survey to 25 units worldwide. He collected the data, and he presented this as this is what people are doing. This is the clinical um, basis of our profession. So I said, okay, if we have contact with more than 3,000 IVF units, let's send them the, inf let's send them the questionnaire on the internet, and let's ask them to respond. And the statistic that we will do, will not do by centers, but we will do it by the number of IVF cycles that they are doing. So if one center is doing 100 cycle, and another one doing only 10 cycle, then the 100 center cycle will be a lot more power in the statistic than the 10 cycle center. So we send the first questionnaire about the luteal phase, and you can see the two questions. We ask how long progesterone needs to be administered in IVF cycle in a patient becoming pregnant, and what is the progesterone you use for the luteal phase. We have no idea what will be the results, but we got the results after a week related to 25 cycles of IVF, 25,000 cycles of IVF, and we analyze it. And then by analyzing it, we wait another week, and the number increased to 50,000 IVF cycles. 50,000 IVF cycles is an enormous number to make statistics of. And if you can see and you look on the graph, you can see that actually there is no, there is no difference between the 25,000 cycle and the 50,000 cycle. So probably the large scale of 25,000 IVF cycle is large enough to do the statistic. And what we found that, in contrary to what is recommended in the literature, to give progesterone until uh, you find uh, the heartbeat of the fetus, which is approximately uh, six weeks of gestation, most of the clinics are giving progesterone to 12 weeks of gestations. So why do they give progesterone for another six weeks if it's not recommended by the literature and there is no evidence to support the administration of it? The other question that we ask is, how do you give the progesterone? There is a possibility to give it as a suppositories in the vagina, and there is a possibility to give it as an IM injection. And it happens that still, large amount of physicians and large number of patients are giving injection of progesterone, daily progesterone, which is painful, which is an oily injection, when the data shows that there is no difference between the IM progesterone and the vaginal progesterone. So I have lots of friends, and I send an email to one of my friends, and I ask him, what's going on here? Why the discrepancy between the data and what is recommended in literature and what physicians are doing? And he wrote me one sentence, which is copied here. He wrote me, Ze'ev, there is practice and there is a science, and we are in practice. So the question is, are we doing what is recommended by the literature, or are we doing what our gut feelings say so? but nobody actually knew what is the large worldwide practice of physicians in the IVF in comparison to what is published in the literature. 
So since then, we did several surveys on the literature, and the number increased, and this survey about polycystic ovaries, is the results is from 179,000 IVF cycles to 62 centers, 68 countries. And you can see that still, although there is a recommendation in the literature, people look at the different, people look differently on what they are doing and what is recommended by the literature. And you can see that here in this, for example, in this uh, question, people will ask, in case of primary infertility in anovulatory PCOS patients, what is your first line of treatment? So 69% of our physicians has known what should be the first line of treatment, but why the other 30 are behaving differently? Are, these, are their patients are different? There is several other questions that you look and you see the diversity of the response. So people are doing, everybody is doing differently. And the question is why? Are, are the patients in different units are different, different countries are different? And you can see again and again, whatever you ask, there are a lot of diversity in the results that we gain uh, as a clinical practice in comparison to the literature. So just I want, in conclusion, to say that the use of the internet as a search tool has a huge uh, value. And these surveys present the daily practice and we're able to raise and discuss the question why we do not follow the literature as it is. And I want to thank everybody who helped us to create this IVF World website. It's a website which we devoted the community, to the medical community. It's open to any suggestion. You can feel that this is actually your website and you can suggest and ask us and add and we are very open to any changes and anything which is related. And why we are here today? Because I have friends at Boston Consulting Group and I discussed with them, well, we have a website, how can we promote it? So they told me, well, all your friends have IVF unit and the website. They have something which is virtual and something which is real. Try to give the IVF Worldwide website something which is real. Maybe you'll do a Congress. And I told them, well, Congresses, there are many Congresses in gynecology. And all the Congresses are state of the art. People are coming to the Congresses, listen, travel in the city, take home one or two messages. I want to be different. I said, okay, try to look for something which is different. And then I thought, well, this is an internet. This is an IVF and the internet. Maybe we'll create a Congress which will enable us to improve our internet capability doing what we are doing. So that's why we are here. And thank you very much.